everybody. My name is Kasha McDaniel, and uh, I own the company Blue Diamond Staging. I am a professional home stager and a certified interior decorator. Um, so you've probably seen or maybe heard of home staging if you've watched some HDTV shows. You've seen all the beautiful furniture coming in and the accessories and everything looks picture perfect. And that's kind of what the homeowners, um, actually buyers, are looking for when they come into a home. They're looking, they actually expect to see that. So what I do is provide that home staging advice to those home sellers and either through a consultation where they do the work themselves or if they want me to take care of things for them, I can do that as well. But my background is not in design. So let me tell you a little bit about what, about me. I was actually Air Force active duty for nine and a half years in the information technology field. So I learned all about computers and routers and how to put a LAN together, all those types of things. Um, and I was in there for nine and a half years, like I said. Then ventured out into the corporate world and did some of that more IT stuff until I had a really bad day, which was my tipping point, <laughs> as I call it. Uh, and you probably, if you've dealt with this before and had a change occur, there's probably something that motivated you to change your mind on what you do. And I realized that day that I never chose my career for me. The Air Force did. And I never realized it. I've been doing this for 17, 18 years almost. And I'm like, I never, what would I have do, done if I had chosen my own career? And so going through this bad day, I went through and tried to figure out, okay, I need something to kind of Get, you know, get my out of this. And my outlet was actually decorating. And so what we had was we had a basement in Virginia, bought a house, and that was the basement with parquet flooring, wood paneling on the walls. It was a thousand square feet of nothing that was just so dark and dingy and scary. And I'm thinking, in Virginia, there's a lot of snow. <laughs> it snows a lot in the winter time. So while the kids can go outside and go play, they're gonna be back in 10 minutes later. Right? <coughs> so you need to get that energy out somehow. So I said, you know, I went to talk to my husband, I, you know what, this would be a great space for the rec room, movie area, a kids' playroom, a craft area, a wet bar, a guest room. And he's like, wow. And then fans are friendly, I'm like, how do you see that? And I look at them and go, how do you not? <laughs> so after a month and actually a couple of years of working, doing the things ourselves and changing it, this is what it turned out to be. So I chose all the colors, all the flooring, the layout, where everything went. Um, and so we showed it to our family and friends and they are looking at me going, wow, that's amazing. And they, so one said, you should be a designer. I'm like, I look at them, I'm an IT person. You know, during those bad days I had at work, I'm like, this was my outlet. This is what I did, you know, like get the frustration out, right? And I said, there's no way. But of course you have that lingering thought in your head, like it's always nagging you going, well, look into it. So I looked into it and an interior designer is a four year degree. I'm like, I'm 38 years old. I don't want to be doing a four-year degree. I have kids. I don't have time for that. I want to do something right now. What can I do to change my life right now? So I looked into it, and I realized that with my past experience with military moves, we move every two or three years. We had to sell our house every two or three years. So we had to get it ready, prepare it, clean it, declutter, move things out. And back then, it wasn't called staging. It was just getting the house ready to sell. And it would sell within a month or less, depending on the home and where it was. Um, and so that's where I realized that was home staging was what I should be doing. And that's why I chose that. So I chose that career. But what it really is, is decorating to sell versus decorating to live. So while you may live in a home and love your man cave or your tchotchke or a collection of plates or whatever it is that you may love, when there's time to sell a house, it's gonna look different. It's gonna feel different. And that's where I try to help the homeowners get past that part. Because as soon as you put your house in the market, I tell them it is no longer your home. Just, you gotta have, sever the ties, it's emotional, it's a business transaction. And that's the hardest part for homeowners to realize that. Um, so that's where I try and tell them like, look, this is gonna feel different. It's not gonna feel like your home anymore. We're trying to get you to the next step of why you're moving. You're moving out because of whether it's moving to family, being with friends, whatever it is, you're moving into a retirement home, a community, okay? So that's where I provide that advice. But <coughs> my market is, like I said, mostly home sellers, but realtors do um, get a benefit from this as well because then their listings get sold faster. Um, home builders as well and house flippers, and I've actually been um, working with two of them, one here in the Fayetteville area and one in uh, the Pinehurst area which, where I live in Moore County um, and help them get their houses sold as well. 
Um, but there come some challenges. I don't consider myself, you know, I didn't plan on this. I consider myself an accidental entrepreneur. Didn't plan on this in my life when I was a little kid. And you know, if someone would have told me I was going to own my own business, I'd say, no way. Mm -mm, forget it. No way. Um, mainly because my challenge is I have very little marketing experience. I'm not a business major. I was a biology major in college. I went to IT, and now I do home staging. Okay. So, but I love what I do, and I love helping people out. Um, and getting them past that point of the stress that they see when they're looking at their house going, oh my God, how am I going to sell this house? And after I'm done with the consultation, I've had hugs from the homeowners going, thank you so much for helping me get past this and telling me what I need to do. Um, so, but my other challenge is real estate agents in my area do their own staging. Um, they've had to learn on their own because I, basically I'm the only home staging company in the area. Even though I've gone out to them, they still do their own. Um, and the other challenges are that the older generation are not as familiar with home staging. They don't know the importance of it, the need for it. If they don't watch HGTV, they don't know anything about it. So I've done some seminars just to educate them on it and tell them, hey, this is why you need to do this. Yes? It's the cost of home staging to the seller a deductible uh, selling expense. Um, it is, so you can, if you talk to your tax advisor, that you can deduct the cost of my consultation and certain fees um, from the price point of your home. So it's, it is a tax deductible thing, but only if it's staged and sold in that same year. But I'm not a tax advisor, so just talk to your tax person, they can tell you more about that. So, but that's what I've been told, so. Um, then again, the homeowners don't wanna spend the money because they think, well, why am I spending on money on a house I don't want to be in anymore? So those are some of the challenges that I've um, run into. Um, so I've tried to grow and expand my business a little bit more. So I'm starting to do a holiday decorating service, just a natural extension of my company to do that because not everybody's going to move every, every year. Not everybody's going to be updating a room every year, right? But the holidays come every year, right? And if you see you know, the, the beautiful decor and you love how it looks, but you don't have the patience to put up that tree or don't have the time or don't want to get up on that ladder to do that, I can do that. So I started doing that for my business to help that grow that area. Um, like I said, I've been working with some home flippers to get them understanding. Um, I had one example I was talking to Cindy about where here in the Fayetteville area, he had a house, he flipped it, it looked fantastic, they put new <coughs> floorings in, updated the kitchen, painted, um, but it was on the market for 70 plus days and there were no bites. Um, so I came in there and got it staged. A week later, it was under contract, full price offer. So it, well, at a minimal amount, you know, you can get some furniture, and again, depending on the budget and the timeline, there are many stories that I can share with you on how home staging helps people. Um, but I also want to expand out into the Fayetteville area. I've been mostly concentrating in Moore County because with the Pinehurst, Southern Pines area, there are more houses, you know, the, um, that are moving around there, but I'm starting to kind of grow out here in the Fayetteville area. So with that, uh, if you need if you have any questions, I'd love to answer them. Yes? Do you charge by the hour of your time or by the square footage that's involved? I charge for a consultation, and then that's a one set fee, and then I charge for every hour after that. So if they just want my advice and take the advice, and I could tell them, you know, you need to get some new bed sheets. I would go to this store, go buy this color, go buy this piece of artwork, go to the store where you can get the better discounts, you know. I tell them where you could do that, and if they don't, if they don't have the time to do the staging themselves, I charge them an hourly rate, and I tell them at the end of the consultation, well, I need to spend an hour or two to go shopping for these things, and you need rental furniture, then I'll need to spend an hour or two, so they have an idea at the end of the consultation how much more they would need to spend to, to get the house staged. <coughs> Question, thank you. Yes? Do you have your own furniture, or do you rent? No, I rent furniture from different companies because I couldn't possibly have the warehouse or the space for that and the money for that, um, mainly because each house is different. One house may be a, a colonial versus a, you know traditional versus a contemporary one. I couldn't have all the couches, and I wouldn't want to put in furniture that doesn't fit well with the style of the home, so I go through different companies and recommend those to work with with the client. <coughs> yes? I might have a few, a few things. Mm -hmm. um, so in the Fayetteville area, the homes tend to move a, a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. They don't sit on the market that long. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that the staging is more to help them 
what you do is more to help it move right. faster? Right. Or Right, well, and so that's the thing, I'm not familiar with the, the housing areas in the Fayetteville area. Like, I know the Pinehurst area, those houses are more of the Gulf Front houses. Right. I'm not familiar with the Fayetteville area, which are the, you know, the Pinehurst equivalent, you know, or even lower end, like <coughs> 200 to 300,000. The Flipper house that I helped stage was under $100,000, right. okay? But it still wasn't moving, even right. under that, at that price point, right. you know, until I staged it, and then it sold a week later. Right. Because the hard part was people, because it was vacant, no one could figure out visually how, what, could a couch fit in here? What kind of size table can I put in there? And that's where I helped them show them that. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to suggest is, we do have a lot of new homes, developers, and what they have to do is what is pick their the customization. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that a lot of people when they're buying, they don't know how, they want to pick all this, you know, because they'll get, get into that room and do their selections, mm -hmm. and they don't know how to equate that with what they have in their home and mm -hmm. how that's going to match up. And I think that would be another area that you could come in because I've seen couples sit there and they just, you know, don't know what to do. Right, right, whether it clashes or not. And right. actually, I have that also as a side thing because coming here, I wasn't sure what, how staging would go. And I'm actually, when I first started, most of my jobs were interior decorating jobs. Mm -hmm. the people moving into old houses with their old furniture and going, oh my gosh, my old furniture doesn't fit in the new house. What do I do? You know, so I you know, help them rearrange it, paint, pick different paint colors. But yes, that's, I've actually reached out to some home builders in the more county area, and I haven't reached out this side to help them and say, look, if you don't have a design room or a show room to help you know, them pick out you know, the colors, the finishes, from the flooring to the walls, to the cabinets, to the lighting, you know, I can help them with that. Right, so what I've seen is that they'll have like the model, mm -hmm. and then upstairs model, there's a room, and it's right. like, you know, you're just going through, mm -hmm random things and they just have no you know right whatever's trendy they might pick but then right. you know when they get to their home it's kind of like a, it's like do you even know if this is going to go with the furniture are you planning on buying new furniture right. houses and somebody right. needs that that same visualization you're talking about when you saw your basement mm -hmm. i i do believe people would pay for that because yes. they any suggestions on like get, would you get with like get with the builders or what would you recommend as far as how to reach out to people to, to so do that? for so with the builders they have in the model and mm -hmm. it's it's kind of like they're all independent right. realtors in that model mm -hmm. so I would just go to the model whenever that it's open usually on the weekends and okay. talk to them because being a part of that for that independent realtor mm -hmm. will help them sell the home Right. So they're going to help to market you, mm -hmm. especially, you know, some couples will come in there and they know what they want. Right, right. But I feel like from what I see, the majority of them just don't know what they want. Right. And so you're helping to influence and smooth that buying process for the um, realtor. So I would talk to them. I wouldn't even, I mean, there's, you know, they're savvy. There's, there's so right. many builders here, too. Mm -hmm. And those realtors jump from one to the next to the next with these new homes. So mm -hmm. stick with the realtor. Okay. Um, and I wouldn't even okay. deal with it, in my opinion. Okay. Yes. Did you have to get any certification or licensing or? No, there's no, um, so because there's no, like you know how a lawyer has to have a, a pass a bar degree, a bar exam to get their degree. There is nothing set for sta stagers. There's nothing, even though there, there's the RISA, you know, those real estate staging associations and they say there's certification. There's nothing that says you have to have anything. That's why I went out on my own and became a certified interior decorator, just to have a certification of some sort. Um, and it was kind of funny, when I did go through that, those classes, um, I kind of, with the homework that we would have, I kind of sneak downstairs and go, this is my homework? I'm like, oh my god, play with colors or, or whatever it was? Or some of the rules that they talk about in designing um, and decorating were things that I already knew, but I didn't realize that was a hard and fast rule. Or certain things I would learn about, like how to hang a picture, and um, and I would learn about you know this should be this far apart and that far apart. I'm like, that's why that was bugging me. You know, when I have it hanging on my wall, I'm like, there's something wrong with the way I hung up all those pictures on that wall. And then when I went through the certification, there are certain things that kind of came more together for me. So there is nothing for home staging, but there for as an interior decorator is there is a certification. A designer, just you know the difference. A designer has to go through a four-year degree. A decorator does not. Designer can move walls. I just decorate the existing four walls. So I don't move walls or anything like that. So. Yes? Do you 
you have an online portfolio? I do. People can see. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's a portfolio page on my website, uh, bluediamondstaging.com. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, we briefly talked about it earlier, but um, every year most counties have a parade of homes, mm -hmm. and that is an opportunity for the builder to show what they're building. Mm -hmm. As were, it's not so much about <laughs> selling it. The home is is they're showcasing what their style, what their style, and all that. Mm -hmm. kind of. mm -hmm. I would, uh, and like I said, several communities have them. Mm -hmm. I would look at, um, and I'm sure you can find the information online. I would consider looking at builders that tend to do that mm -hmm. and working trying to uh, network with them and get in on that because it's a big staging area. Right, right. Big event. Yes. Uh -huh. Thank you. Yes. In that same thing, Cindy, coming up are the holiday tour of homes. Okay. So um, there's different women's clubs that will host mm -hmm. decorated homes, and I think sometimes those okay. home owners may not have the time to do it to the utmost. Right. And are those holiday tour? I think I saw one maybe in Moore County, but I don't know if there's more in Fayetteville. Is it more predominantly here? Okay. Well, there's a downtown uh, tour of loft homes and apartments. Okay. And um, I think the Junior League may host one also. Okay. But in that same vein, don't forget businesses like to decorate their storefronts and their <coughs> shops for Christmas, and a lot of them would not, you know. Right. Yeah. That's true. Mm -hmm. Yes. I realize that it's not staging, but have you considered, speaking of window dressing, doing, have you done any type of merchandising design? I have not, um, but that is definitely something that, you know, especially small businesses, you know, not necessarily the big ones like Starbucks or whatever, you know, but even then. Um, but I have looked into like just apartments, for example, they have model rooms that they have set up, depending on which one it is. but. But yeah, but small businesses is decorating for the holidays that, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind doing that too. Mm -hmm. um, what's been uh, the level of um, sales so far since you started? Um, not very much at all. So the ones that you have had, have they been, were they attracted to the staging because of the time they wanted to sell the house or were they attracted to the price increase that they could get more money for what they sold? It was more of a time. It was more of a time thing that they can get their couch sold faster. So, um, like I said, most of my clients lately, in the very beginning, were interior decorating. So, staging, I haven't done as much staging. Okay. So, so then, yeah. in those people who the issue was the issue of time, mm -hmm. what was the the pressing issue that made them want to say, "I need to sell this very quickly"? Um, one um, in particular had. Um, been on the market for 10 plus months or so. They took it off the market, they had updated a couple things, and then they hired me before they put it back on the market to make sure that all the changes that they made that were recommended, that was feedback that they got, yes. was done, and anything else that I would have suggested on top of that. Um, so, so, yeah. Because this is, this this is more of a frustration. Kind of, yes. Than so, this anything. is kind of what's turning in my mind is I, I kind of see it as your. Your customer market would basically range in two ways, right? Mm -hmm. Which is because it's very tied to who you are, mm -hmm. right? And what you can do because design is a visual thing. Right. I have a designer at my company and I don't use anybody else, mm -hmm. right? To design anything. Right. I just, she says she has something to do and she's unavailable for two weeks. I won't do any design work. Cause, right. And to me, when you have that kind of value, then you, you have something where on one side, you know, it's very discretionary. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. in the sense that to me, you could be targeting like the like the um, condos downtown across from the Airborne Museum, mm -hmm. things like that. Those kind of people are going to come in because they don't have the time to sit and think about. Right, I'm going to design my condo, mm -hmm. and if the condominium says, "Well, you know, we don't provide that service," but here's Kasha, right, you know, and talk to her because those people are going to have the budget. Right. Because they prefer to have time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They'll pay money to save time. Exactly, yes. On the other side, I see also an opportunity where they don't have the time, mm -hmm. right, which can happen very quickly in a military town. Right. Right, yes. where it's like, hey, I'm PCSing or I have to go or whatever. Right. I need to sell my house ASAP. Right. Right. And I don't want to skim on the price in order to do that. Right. Well, but what I found with the military, especially around here, yeah. um, is that they're on the lower budget. So they don't, I, I've had phone calls of, I really want to get with you and I really understand the value of it, but I don't have the budget 
to do any kind of staging. So, so this is where this is where I was. So asking. I do offer a, a percent discount for the military. So what I would the reason why I asked about the the, um, the pressing issue of time is because it would make sense then that your referral service would come from people in that stage of frustration, mm -hmm. right? Not the initial stage, right? Where like you said, oh, I want to, but. Right. Which to me is code language for I see the value, but not enough yet. Right. But um, connecting with something like Zillow or these online websites that will say this house has been on the market for six months. Mm -hmm. They tell you. Mm -hmm. Right. This house has been on for X amount of time. Mm -hmm. You become that medium because Zillow and all those housing websites, they want they don't want houses on their website for 10 months. Right. No. <laughs> they want people to be like, hey, this thing is going. And the last house, and then even when you're looking at the house, it'll be like, oh, this this house had 10 other viewers, and mm -hmm. you know, blah blah blah, and three visits, and the last house that was viewed in this area was sold in less than three months. Mm -hmm. So to me, that would be on a small scale in terms of volume, an mm -hmm. easy way to get you referrals mm -hmm. by serving as a local consultant, right, for these individuals. So then Zillow says, hey, when your house has been on the market for longer than mm -hmm. five months or six, whatever the the magic right. number is. Right. Right. Here's Kasha, she's in your area, right? Bam, and then eventually you can scale, right, mm -hmm. through virtually replacing yourself. So then as you say, look, I'm getting so many people, now I'm gonna bring in someone else who may be an actual, you know, who may be an interior designer, who may be able to move those walls or whatever else may mm -hmm. be needed. Right. But at least you have your base and you have your funnel, mm -hmm. but on the ex on the an expensive end, because of the nature of what you do, to me, it's it's devaluing what you do if you go for numbers. Right, right. To me, I would go for fewer numbers, right. higher quality people, and just right. say, look, right. if you're if you're trying to just sell like a regular house in a regular neighborhood, mm -hmm. this is not for you, right? Mm -hmm. Or like you said, you're on a low budget. This is not for you, and that's okay because critical piece of marketing is who to ignore, right? So you have um, what is it, Lululemon? They do the yoga pants and stuff. Mm -hmm. And the, the CEO basically came out and in an interview was like, you know, you don't, the person asked him, aren't you concerned that your yoga pants are overpriced, right? $150 for some yoga pants. Right, right. right. And he said, well, if you want cheap yoga pants, you can go to TJ Maxx and all those places. Mm -hmm. That's not my market. Right, right. right. And I need people to believe mm -hmm. in the fact that, look, if you want something comfortable, it's going to serve what you need, right. we're your person. Right. And I think that. When people feel like it's exclusive, higher end purchasers go to those places because they're like, hey, this is not something everybody right. has access to. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that you're providing an amazing service in that space. So I look at those things as, you know, um, fundamental to your model is using that digital space mm -hmm. that you can start targeting that way because you can go in there and see that those homes are right. there, set up a visit, and say, hey, look, this is what I do. <coughs> Your home is not sold in six months. Mm -hmm. Let's let's have a talk. Right. And then on the other side, just go for the high end. Okay. That right. And that's why I started kind of the pine perch area because that is the higher end homes, you know. So and like I said, I'm not familiar with the Fayetteville area. I'm sure there are pockets of it. I'm just oh, yeah. not familiar with it. Yeah, you got like the Haymount area, right? right? Then you have the lofts and stuff downtown. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the other side, towards the southern part, is also and up towards uh, Fukaver Arena as well. Okay. So you have a lot of, like you said, pockets of it. But I think right. doing that will give you better quality, you know, experience in terms of what your customer experience is. Right. Um, because those people are going to say, "Hey, I'll bankroll this," versus the right. Zillow people. You kind of say, "Look, you need something cheaper. This is what I can do." Mm -hmm. um, that's all I'll say for now. I can okay. go say on the book. I don't want to give other people okay. a chance to Thank talk. You. Yes. yes. Um, and the other idea and. Full disclosure, I love interior decorating and design. I did my certificate, however, and my best friend is like my sister. She does real estate here in Fayetteville. So we had a dream at some point <laughs> to team up together, but you can't work with him. So um, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, one idea I had for Fayetteville, because when we talk about military, we know we're talking about a budget. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. and one idea I thought of that I would share with you, and you can think because we already have a website, mm -hmm. and you probably are way into design website design, and you can manipulate that a lot easier than I ever could have thought of. Right. But one of the things I we had an idea about was to 
on your website, curate items, okay? So at a budget-friendly cost um, to point um, families in, uh, military families, so that they have sort of, let's say they wanted to come to Blue Diamond and they wanted a package for their living room. Mm -hmm. You've picked out for the um, window treatments, mm -hmm. um, um, cushions, something that gives them an idea of how to design and decorate, for example, their living room. And these are all, this is you. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be able to, and sort of curate it for them because we thought together, like, we know they can't go out there and buy all this stuff. And right. we don't have the time. A lot of, um, you, we're talking about women who um, have to take their kids to school, pick them up. Right. They don't have time to go through, right. um, you know, what's right. that new place that opened up in the Freedom Town Center? Home goods. Home goods. Like, oh, I mean, okay. I, I home goods, I could spend two hours there. Exactly. I have a little kid. Yes. So it's like, they don't have time to go through that. Right. So mm -hmm. if they can even come to you, because when you do buy a new home, like, yes, mm -hmm. you need help design, mm -hmm. decorating and designing. And some right. of them are like 21 year olds, 22 year olds, who have no idea how to, to, to decorate and, you know, mm -hmm. design a home. And so that was one of the areas where we saw that there could be a need and to address those who aren't in the Pine um, Hearst budget right. and, and income, but still right. offer something to them mm -hmm. um, that's unique to you, your mm -hmm. sense of style. And it could be just as simple as, you know, having it on your website mm -hmm. and then either ordering through you or, you know, sometimes if you um, direct them to certain retailers, you can get a percentage of it. That was sort of what we thought about. So I just wanted to throw it to you yeah. since we'll never Isn't get that there. like a design block, like a budget design right, block, but right. out of Fayetteville, that would right. actually happen. And it's strictly <laughs> yeah. addressing that military. Right. Um, because there are so I, I mean, I, I was so surprised to see how many, I mean, and some people say it's not a good thing financially to buy a home that early on for younger couples, but they come here and they buy a home. Right, right. They do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Maple is a place to be. Don't, don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's why I'd rather hear from you guys to tell me what, because I'm, like I said, I'm not familiar with Fayetteville. You guys know the ins and outs, and I'd mm -hmm. love to hear where or what places and yeah i'm glad that home goods is here and i don't have to go out to apex or right exactly like that, like, you know, exactly so, there is, there is, so. so whenever it's funny because whenever i have designed like rooms in my own home mm -hmm. you know i have family come in and like oh, where'd you get that chair how did exactly. you get that rug well, i'm like oh, i got the rug from so and so home yeah. goods the chair came from target that came from ikea or whatever and they I'm like how did you know to put all that stuff together I'm like exactly you just do yeah. i don't know you just do and that's your talent that right. is your talent mm -hmm. there's so many people who have no idea how to do that. But Fayetteville is definitely a place that has a need. We can't just limit it to, there are people who don't have that budget, but you can still offer your talent to them in a low involvement way, like I said, through the website or something. But I mean, I moved here from Boston and I was shocked to see how many homes get sold and bought up here because you just don't see things and how quickly it happens. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely opportunity in this area. Are you on Pinterest? Uh, I am, yes. Uh, I just don't use it very often. I use Instagram a lot more off lately. Okay. Um, so that's because it's a more visual thing. So I have some before and after pictures that I'll show of staging projects and things like that or, or whatever is going on. So. Have you thought about doing um, uh, one in terms of narrative where you basically create a story right from the consultation? Because a lot of times when we deal with marketing, right, the, the challenge becomes people feel like they have to spend money right mm -hmm. to get certain things to a certain place so they can market and say oh right. we have this design or this flyer mm -hmm. but the way that social media makes it is that you can if you build a story and a narrative mm -hmm. right of saying hey I'm going on a consultation today mm -hmm. right I'm you know gonna be talking to these kind of people this is the kind of house that they have mm -hmm. right you come in and obviously you have to get permission from those individuals depending on how exclusive you want to share right, right right what you're looking at but mm -hmm. people definitely are intrigued by that because mm -hmm. this is not something you hear about every day right they feel like hey i'm going to look at this house and this is the consultation what happens is they begin to through your social media followers mm -hmm. to see like this is what she can see this is how she does it right. live in vivo right because now i'm like 
oh, she just said this, that's actually a really good idea. Right. And also, um, if you have one person who's willing to say, you know what, mm -hmm. I'm willing to let you do this for me, mm -hmm. and let's go start to finish, and maybe even get some companies on board. Because um, I think with your furniture stuff, there's got to be a, a way to make that smooth for mm -hmm. suppliers, right? If you're sending people to go buy furniture from stores, like, you're basically doing marketing for them. Right, right? yes, and yes. So, in essence, there has to be a way to make that relationship a little more mutually beneficial. Okay. To say that, hey, look, right. can I take furniture or use pieces right from your store, mm -hmm. and I'm going to use it to stage it, mm -hmm. so that people can see what it looks like before mm -hmm. they purchase it. Mm -hmm. Because the reality is, you're going to sell a couch in my living room way faster than you're going to sell it in the store. Right. So if you let me take it, put it over in their house, and they say, hey, what do you think about the colors, whatever, whatever. And then you combine that with the social media narrative piece where they saw you pick up the furniture, drop it off, organize it, hang up the pieces, change the lighting, mm -hmm. and I'm watching this before my very eyes mm -hmm. on a Facebook Live or something. Right. It's like, whoa. <coughs> yeah, okay. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. right, right, yeah. And I've actually um, looked and dabbled a little bit in Anchor, and that's more uh -huh. of, a, I'm not familiar with that app. Yep. Uh, which is, is, there's no video to it, it's just the talking to if you're not familiar with it. It's just basically like a, a your own radio channel, basically. Yes. You just talk about, you know, hey, I, you know, like you said, I'm visiting a client, you know, and you can visually talk to them over the phone, you know, over through the app and say, you know, I suggested in the dining room, for example, yesterday I had a staging consultation and they had a dining room, they had a china hutch full of glass and told them to take out half of it, you know, or there's marriage certificates on the wall, take those down, you know, so you don't have to visually see that, but understand that, hey, I'm looking at marriage certificates that are hanging up on the wall or the 1,001, you know, pieces <laughs> of whatever dishes right. that need to come down, you know, so, yeah. And my last comment is augmented reality. Because AR is being used by Ikea and all these places where I can take the pieces Right, and mm -hmm. put it in you visually on your phone, mm -hmm. and just say, okay, this is how it would look in your living room, mm -hmm. right? And you can move it around, which could be um, an easy way for you to also take people who have lower budget mm -hmm. to give them a visual snapshot without you having to do a lot of lead work, but you're making the same amount of money. Sorry, asking what was saying again? Augmented reality. Augmented reality. So there's virtual reality, right? Mm -hmm. Then you have alternative reality and then augmented reality. And that technology is now possible on iPhones and I'm pretty sure Samsung has it on there now, but I, Apple just put it on their new eights and their iPhone tens that it's built in now where you can put pictures and figures and mm -hmm. dinosaurs, whatever, in what you're visually looking at. Right. And that's the Pokemon Go and all that. but. For what you're doing, it, it this is a natural fit so that you don't have to have mm -hmm. even the furniture pieces. Right. Um, if you can get, um, you know, even partnerships on that level, that would totally give you open market for people like I have low budget. Okay, well, this is what we can do. Right. You pay for this time, you know, the consultation fee. Mm -hmm. After that, you can pay for, let's say, an extra two, three hours. You get this augmented reality thing, take the pieces right on my website look at it in your house and I'll say this is what I think will look good here okay. then you look at it on their phone it's like oh right I actually like it right. okay. Great. low cost Great. just kind of picking back on what he said in a mm -hmm. personal way um, we are refurbishing remodeling a vintage camper mm -hmm. so I follow this flipper on Instagram mm -hmm. and she just happens to be refurbishing a camper mm -hmm. almost exactly like ours and so, you know, like what he said, if I can watch her, okay, she did this. Right. Well, I can do that. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's, it's great. Now, that's a very specific, small market, but mm -hmm. I think there's a lot to what he's saying as far as being able to see it visually in mm -hmm. one setting and being able to apply it to right. my setting. Right, because I don't have the software like the home builders have. I have the 3D things you see on the TV shows on my eye. Don't have the software changes so often. It has to be updated. I have to relearn something, and it's expensive. And I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah, I don't have the money to be doing that myself as my own company. Yeah, but there yeah. are people that you can partner with who actually yes. have the right. 3D, the three-dimensional camera, the 360 yep. cameras that can do that. So, um, and I think you just become a, a partner for them. Right. And right. that's yeah. you know, it's a mutually. Uh, 
beneficial in terms of the numbers, but yeah. that, the value is in the not the community that mm -hmm. you're building mm -hmm. through the narratives that you tell. Right. So then it's like, oh, I'm following. So you get more following. Once you have community, now we want access to your community, even though they all came for free information. Right. 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 Um, to visually see what you do. Right. Why did you call it Blue Diamond? Um, so it's uh, based on a favorite necklace of mine that I wore um, that actually gave me confidence every time I wore it. It's kind of a silly thing, but to me it was just whatever I wore, I just felt confident, more sure of myself, and loved the look of it. So when I tried to explain, I'm like, how do I explain it in Blue Diamond? I'm like, Blue Diamond Stage. So it seems to kind of roll off the tongue a little bit. Okay. It's a nice one. Yes. Um, I'm, I don't know if you but I live in Spring Lake and they have quite a lot of gated communities mm -hmm. um, and some are popping up and the older ones that aren't so much older, people are struggling to sell it. Um, so it might be worth maybe even going to POAs um, in these communities and they, often they have different magazines quarterly that you could offer your services in them. Mm -hmm. um, where I live, there's been houses on the market for 10 months a year, and they're, and they're trying to sell it because just down the road there's brand new property selling for the same price. Right. Um, so if you can reach out potentially to the, 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 the housing associations and for ask to advertise those magazines, um, mm -hmm. the whole community will be those magazines. Okay. Right. Yes. Uh, I was contacted some months back from a, an investor group from the D.C. area. Mm -hmm. They were looking at distressed apartment communities in Fayetteville. Mm -hmm. And the occupancy was extremely low. Mm -hmm. And he was asking me, can you bring the occupancy up? And of course, I said, I can do that because I wasn't going to be dead. You can claim anything. Right, right. You know you're not going there. Right. Um, but investors that are I would look at distressed properties because they're getting ready to spend a lot of money. Right. They yes. know that when they buy it. Why mm -hmm. can't you just be one part of that whole puzzle? Right. Yeah. That's a um, good. I've never heard of that being called that. So that's a good like keyword just to look up distressed prop. Because I have I use Google AdWords, you know, to advertise. That's how people find me. It's on Google, really. Um, and so because because I know we type in home stager that they're already a potential client you know it's not I'm not cold calling somebody who's not even thinking about it it's someone who's actually thinking about staging their home and that's a potential client so that would be a good keyword for me to use. Are you getting any traffic maybe, on that? Mm -hmm. That's most of my clients come from Google AdWords. Maybe you should try a different Google AdWord as well especially for the market that doesn't really understand what staging is. Mm -hmm. That's true. So what? What like how to sell my house faster. Yes. Or, right. <laughs> well, and then some of those keywords, those are, are like five bucks a right. keyword. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So so it depends <laughs> on the, yes, I know. And I've been playing with that, trying to figure out that what's the, the keyword that I can afford. Some of them, they're just out of my range. So right. per click, five bucks a click, I'm like, oh, that goes pretty quick. Do you yes. have your numbers on how many clicks? Does it take you 10 clicks to get one buyer? Or do you know that? I don't know that off my head, no. Yes. There are so many realtors, and and that is so competitive. It's kind right. of a cutthroat profession, right. honestly. Right. I think if I was going to sell my house or was getting ready to buy one, mm -hmm. I think I would like to pick a realtor who offered a decorating allowance, and that would yep. be you. Like if this realtor said, oh, yeah, and it you buy a house through me, mm -hmm. I'm going to put a thousand dollars towards X number of decorating compensation <coughs> from a professional. Like if I have other mom with little kids or or just a working lady, mm -hmm. they, oh yeah, I'm going with that realtor. That sets her apart from the other realtors. Hmm. And okay. that would also be a foot in the door for you because once someone gets comfortable with you mm -hmm. and they like your work, the next time they get ready to do something, they're going to call you again. Right. Yeah. Right, because like I said when, on, my, on my presentation that the sta the realtors do their own staging, so I can't even, you know, if they hire someone, they pay them like 50 bucks just to stage. I'm like, no, I charge more than that, <laughs> you know, so, yeah. But you yes. wouldn't be doing it. You would be right. Right. allowance. Right. And once the seller, once that realtor's finished, they're done with that customer. Right. But this way they would not be doing it. Mm-hmm. 
We've talked a lot about staging homes, but one thing I would also look for is when you see buildings going up, because nice offices need staging as well. And like the attorney's office, they're not going to have the skills and knowledge to stage their reception area or their offices. Right. They can tell you the kind of furniture they want in terms of usefulness, mm -hmm. but they don't know how to stage away from doctor's offices. So right. when you see those buildings right. starting to go up, mm -hmm. find out what they are and find out the kind that you can stage the waiting rooms or the reception areas for. Right. right. Okay. And maybe even the uh, Univision building. They got floors and floors of offices here in downtown that they're trying to, to rent. Uh, right. And that could be a staging way to say, hey, this is how this office space could be utilized. Okay. Uh, yeah. To be able to lease mm -hmm. a lot more of those spaces. On another angle, using real reality, have you been to any, have you been to any trade shows, realtors, or house no, I, shows or anything no, like that? No, I have not, no. Get stager? No, I haven't done a trade shows yet. No, no, no. Um, Do the face-to-face, -face belly to belly thing? Right, right, right. No, I haven't done trade, like, I've done, like I said, seminars, like I'll have like the Senior Enrichment Center, Retirement Community. Um, I actually had one, when I first started, I had the local newspaper write an article about me and my business starting in Moore County area and at the same time I said hey we're having I'm having a free seminar on what is home staging and it was funny because I had like 20 people show up in this hotel room that I had this um, seminar in and there was one realtor in there and at the very end she's like she looks at me she goes how did you get all these homeowners in here because I figured it'd be all real estate <laughs> agents and I'm like they are they're smart homeowners know if the if money in their pocket yeah. if they're staging a house they want to sell their house they want to make money they don't want to give it away right. you know they're smart too so she was just floored that i got homeowners to show up and not real estate agents so i'm like no no they're smart too they know what they want <laughs> actually i'm gonna take the last question please sure what can this community do to help you um well a lot of the it was a lot of just brainstorming really to tell me what areas around here that i haven't thought of you know, if there's a, a group, a club or something that's, whether it's a book club, a garden club or something like that, or a home builder that I should get in contact with um, that you know of that, that could help me that I can make contact with, um, that was mostly what I was looking for to kind of understand what I'm missing, what I'm not, you know, tapping into. So, yeah, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.